Hello, awesomeness junkies. Welcome back to Hustle is for Life Motivation. Uh, we're back with another awesome video. Remember, this channel is all about upgrading your five, the five people you spend the most time with, but also upgrading the software of your brain because you want to become the best version of yourself. That's why you come to this channel. And my goal is to bring on amazing guests and basically try and dissect their mindset, dissect their lives, etc. for you guys. So you can actually, you know, learn from their uh, kind of grand ideas, their strategies, their tactics, the processes they follow, how they live their life, and then start to apply them to your life so you can start to accelerate your life, okay? That's the whole goal behind this channel. Now, the person I have today with me um, has actually been on the channel before. We did an interview before, okay? His name is Jorim uh, Hartley Weber, and he actually uh, is somebody who is a mindset expert, really. He actually wrote a, a whole thesis on uh, Carol Dweck's work, uh, you know, on mindset, and also he studied very specifically what were the actual successful strategies for developing and maintaining a growth mindset in the three uh, domains of sport, education, and entrepreneurship. And that was what the interview was about last time. Now, since then, he's been very, very active. He's been absolutely crushing it. He started a YouTube channel. He started a Facebook page. He has started his own coaching business. So he's really been accelerating his life. And this interview is uh, going to start off as a bit of a catch-up to see what he's been up to, why did he make those decisions, and what's been happening behind the scenes since the last time we spoke. And we're then going Going to talk about what's next for him what's coming up ahead what are his future plans etc and in between obviously we'll you know dive deep into mindset we'll dive deep into you know goal setting and all sorts of other stuff because one of the big highlights for me from the last interview was the fact that we discussed that most people actually when they you know face some sort of adversity in their life they they actually come to a stop okay or they give up but the the actual right way to approach it is to actually change your strategy and then go back and attack again and keep trying different strategies until you succeed and that's the right way to do it that's the growth mindset way of doing it so we're hopefully going to dive deep into all of that amazing stuff uh, but before we get into that uh, please help me welcome Joram Hortley Weber back onto the channel. He's just an awesome person and he's got a lot of value to drop on us. So Joram, thank you so much for taking the time to be here on the channel. I know you've recently actually moved to Lipson uh, as well. So I know that's been you know a, a, a big thing for you right now where a lot of stuff has been happening and you have to put some stuff on hold. So I really appreciate you taking the time to be here with us today. Thanks, Tala. Yeah, I'm happy to be here. <laughs> awesome, man. I'm really glad that you were able to make some time. Now, can we actually start off there? The, the, exactly what, what I just talked about. Can we just start off from saying like last time when we were doing the interview, you said, well, you know, I want to kind of start a business maybe, you know, look into coaching people into minds, you know, about their mindset um, and how they can actually become the best version of themselves, how they can have an abundant life and achieve everything they want to achieve and, you know, um, kind of hit their dreams and achieve their goals, etc. So since then, I know that you have been working on developing your coaching business and you've started a YouTube channel and then you've also been working on your Facebook page. Can you maybe take us behind the scenes and just kind of do a bit of a catch up on like what happened? Like when, since then, basically, you know, what, what were your thought processes? What led you to actually start your coaching business? What was that process like? And then actually starting your YouTube channel and what was the logic behind that and how you actually now, you know, working on your Facebook page to promote everything and actually put yourself out there as an entrepreneur and essentially a mindset coach. Yeah. So what it of course starts with a decision. A decision you made. So shortly after talking with you in the last interview, yeah. Um, yeah. well, there I said, yeah, I'm probably going to do something with coaching. And I was like, okay, what am I actually want? What do I actually want to do? And I was like, well, I would like to coach people. Um, so um, that was one one of the thoughts, one of the ideas I had. And then uh, it took me a couple of weeks to develop it and think it through. And like, what do I really like? What kind of coaching? Who do I want to coach? And uh, how am I going to do it logistically? Yeah. Um, how do I get, get get to reach the people? Um, what languages do I offer? You know, um, all those kinds of things. And then, um, actually, it was a, a big step 
printing the first flyer <laughs> and, and hanging it out. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> so I was really standing there with a the flyer in my hand, putting it onto the blackboard and thinking, like, I'm really doing this. Yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm doing it. This is, awesome. this is, you know, <laughs> yeah. um, that was the first, the first step. So I had um, a couple of yeah flyers, posters. Um, I also announced on on Facebook that I was going to coach people, and um, then that was that was just like this action of it was it was actually rather. Um, a psychological process in me that really happened there because uh, until now nobody really um, got to be coached by me through that channel. Yeah. So um, it was just for me like I'm really doing this. I'm mm. I'm putting this there publicly. Um, this is how I'm selling myself, you know. And then the second idea um, direction was the YouTube channel. Yeah. So or the videos. So I was also thinking about like okay I want to I want to help people and I want to help a lot of people. Now if I do coaching that's great. What's another way? Another way is reaching several people mm. with one thing. Yeah. And then I was like, okay, I'm I'm gonna record videos because I know stuff that is not there in such a compact compact way in videos yet. So I I started to create this idea and um yeah like sketch some some yeah kind of series and I'm, I'm doing series to also have myself a bit structured yeah and i i started to record videos mm. and that was i don't know like two three months ago i think the first video um and my goal actually was then to do two videos a week um i had to put this to a hold um f because we were moving um packing all the stuff you know there's no place in the apartment to shoot the video anymore. And also just your nerves. You, you're thinking of other things. Mm. And right now, um, here in Lisbon, I have not shot any video yet. Uh, we've had one attempt, but it didn't go very well with the lighting. So uh, I have some topics prepared that I'm hopefully going to be able to shoot in the next couple of days. We'll see about that. Awesome. Um, so that was about the YouTube channel. And then, well, you, you said it already. A couple of days ago, I launched the Facebook page. Yeah, I've been working on it, and was like, oh, okay. I, I really, it was really difficult for me to come up with a logo hmm. because you know, if you if you want to publish your page, yeah, you have to have a logo. Yeah, and I had I had a lot of ideas, but most of them were very complex, and you know, I'm into drawing and stuff, so. That was okay, but they were just too complex, and I thought, I need something basic. And then I finished the logo that I have now a couple of days ago, put it on the page, published it, and put all the videos there, and started inviting people. Nice, nice, yeah. awesome, man. I know, like, it's really exciting to see all that happen in the meantime, because uh, I was observing this, obviously, from my end, that fact that, you know, you've launched your coaching business, you are started your YouTube channel, you've started posting some videos, and you know, you, you're, you're getting some traction, you know, uh, on those videos. Also, the fact that you've now launched your Facebook page. So I was observing this all from my end, and it was really exciting to actually see it, you know, happen live in front of my eyes. And that was really great, which is why I invited you back so we can have an interview on, like, have a bit of a catch up. So, you know, maybe, you know, you can tell me what was, you know, going on behind the scenes as well, because we were in touch, but we, we weren't. Um, you know, having long conversations because obviously you were busy with the move and you had just launched mm -hmm. your YouTube channel and coaching and you were busy with busy with all that stuff. So it's really, really yeah. exciting to actually be, you know, someone who got to observe that while it was happening live. Mm -hmm. um, but yeah, you, you know, you're right. The whole thing about, you know, I'm really doing this you know, going ahead and taking action. I mean, sometimes it hits you because no matter how much you think about it, taking action is the final step. Taking action is the biggest step. And, you know, nothing can really prepare you for the moment where you do go ahead and you do, you know, take that action and, you know, put up the first flyer, for example, or, you know, put up the first poster and hand out the first business card, etc. So, yeah, I can I can kind of relate to that. That's uh, That's pretty awesome. So... 
in terms of then let's let's take a little bit deeper there in terms of your actually starting your coaching business how did you kind of market yourself um in terms of trying to attract clients what was it that you're trying to sell the clients because coaching is quite broad coaching could be obviously you know anything so you know how specifically were you marketing yourself and putting yourself out there for the for your clients yeah i've actually thought about this a lot um i mean obviously it's all in the area of life coaching but still there you have the subsections and stuff and um i've been working i'm still working on a website that well, it's running. I think I sent you a link once, but it's not public yet. I mean, I haven't published it anywhere. And they also put some different categories. Um, but I'm I'm not entirely sure how is the best way to do it because now I have I, – I thought of, like, sports coaching and, you know, um, time efficiency coaching, happiness coaching. Um, but I'm not sh- sure whether it's so – smart to actually separate those because they do go hand in hand. I mean, of course, some people are more interested in one thing than the other, but yeah. they all influence each other. So I'm I'm not sure yet. So what I do with the coaches I have is I let them decide. Okay. So, I, you know, they come to me because they want to improve on something. They want to change something. And that's what we're working on. And okay. then... I tailor my approach, the kind of strategies that I cover most, based on how I get to know them. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, so it's not really prescribed, Mm. like a prescribed method. I mean, I do have some, like, kind of, like, templates that I could be using, but it really depends on the person. Um, And sometimes the person actually also does not really know what they want in the first place when they come. They just say, I, for example, I need to change my work, I don't achieve, you know, yeah. I want to perform. Mm. And then actually what they what they want to change or what they need to change in their life is something very different. Mm. They, they want to compensate with their work for, I don't know, social problems. Right, right. And you, you don't know that from the beginning, so you have to be flexible and adapt. Yes, yeah, no, I, I completely understand. And I think... You know that would be the case in any any kind of coaching uh, business or any coaching program where you know everybody's going to be different. They're going to come from different backgrounds. They're going to have different needs, and really you need to explore their needs and you know find out who they are and what they really truly want to achieve, and then you know meet them halfway kind of thing. Um, I totally mm-hmm. understand that. But in terms of actually the clients that you're working with right now, the the people who you're coaching right now, what sort of things? are you covering with them? So is it mainly mindset? Is it mainly productivity? Is it mainly time management? Is it, you know, um, say maybe something emotional that, that they have to deal with? What, what sort of things are you working with? Just just out of curiosity. Okay. Um, so I would say um, what comes up mostly is um, about priorities setting priorities or actually recognizing priorities. Okay. What do I actually need? Um, and then getting into action. Okay. So I think that's that's the most um, yeah, common thing that, that I could I could tell right now. So right. it's really about what do they really need? Hmm. What do they what do they think they need? Then we talk about that, and then they realize perhaps that oh, actually, it's more into this direction. Hmm. And then, okay, what action can you can you take? Okay. And then that's that's what they should do. <laughs> <laughs> okay. All right. Awesome. That's cool. I I mean I I can see you know why it would be such a common thing because most people do struggle with like setting priorities, setting goals. Um, and then, you know, I think the biggest one of them all is actually going ahead and taking action on it, you know, going ahead and actually, mm-hmm. you know, pursuing whatever it is that you want to pursue. So I, I can I can kind of understand why it would be such a common thing. But um, it's quite interesting because, you know, given the fact that you know so much about mindset, I, you know, one would think that mostly people will come to you kind of trying to work out their 
emotional issues or kind mm-hmm. of like the the kind of the mental traps that keep that are keeping them in the past or you know having mm-hmm. to deal with their their own kind of mindset they're always having experiencing negative feelings and negative thoughts etc so it's quite interesting that actually the most common problem is setting priorities and you know going ahead and taking action that's quite interesting yeah. awesome so yeah. um in terms of when you um you know started your youtube channel i know you said that you wanted to uh, reach out to a huge audience and and actually go ahead and you know help as many people as you could through those mm-hmm. videos because obviously the video could be seen anywhere around the world at any point in time because it's out there on youtube so yeah. you know when you started your youtube channel what kind of thought process did you go through to say actually you know the youtube channel is the best medium rather than say a podcast rather than maybe a blog or some other medium what made you decide on on actually doing videos for youtube i think it has to do with uh personal preference a lot okay so um i do listen to podcasts every now and then um like i've listened to yours for example but i don't commonly do it very much mm. okay. so it's i don't know it's just it's just one step that you have one more step that you have to take to get it you have to download it and then you have to open it if you have a video just click on it and there it goes okay and actually we also have some what well, visual information going on um i use it in some of the videos and the others is well just the talking head you know <laughs> um and actually i am still considering um writing so okay. i'm not i'm not completely sure whether i will do that um publicly or only for the people i work with okay like kind of like workbooks or or something like that yeah um uh, but there are definitely some topics coming soon that will have some some written down some workbook style um information but yeah deciding all, uh, for the video of a blog was also with what's more catchy yeah yeah you know because you just click on the video or, or it plays automatically in your facebook stream for example and you just you just stay there for a second if it's a text or a link i don't know i'm personally less inclined to click on it on a video right okay yeah and right. additionally actually um one of the side goals that i have with the videos is to improve my presenting skills sure. so actually there's there's another um self goal that is embedded in the videos okay okay awesome awesome yeah no i think definitely uh you know videos are i think the most common and the most widely accepted form of communication in the 21st century at the moment because it's personal mm-hmm. um you know you can see the other person you can you know look look into their eyes look at their micro expressions on their face and it goes a lot deeper than just listening to something because it's visual the information is not just or you know you're uh, not just listening to it but also you're seeing it visually happen in front of you um and it also the fact i believe that people trust video more because you can see the other person on video you can see their you know micro expression on their face body language etc and you know people say anything between 70 to 90% of what we say is actually not the words we use it's it's actually the the body language um and the micro expressions yeah. so i think that's that's really important and i think video is one of the biggest kind of um you know widely accepted forms of communication in the 21st century and i think that's probably the right way to go in terms of trying to mm-hmm. help as many people as possible like you want to and also i think yeah. you know building an audience for yourself that will be really important as well you're building an audience you're building a platform for yourself which will later on might you know turn out to be something that you can then leverage um to do other things and i think some of the most successful people you know that you will see for example like um you have uh what's his name let's say Seth Godin um you have you know um uh, Tom Billu 
you have uh, Tim Ferriss. They, they have like their blogs, they also do videos, they do interviews, they do quite a few things, a mixture of things all together. They do solo videos, they also do interviews, um, you know, they might have guests on, they do Q&As, you know, all sorts of stuff. And they do all these different things simply because it's a holistic approach to try and convey that material to their audience. Yeah. Um, so, yeah, I, I think you're starting a YouTube channel um, is, a, is a definitely a big commitment, but I think it's the right way to go definitely for yourself. So let's kind of go deeper because obviously I have this YouTube channel as well. How have you found it, like in terms of actually managing a YouTube channel, um, running it, making sure that you do the videos, upload them, you know, everything that goes behind the scenes, the SEO, writing the descriptions, putting the tags in, you know, mm -hmm. um, like, for example, writing out your um, plans for the video or writing out your script. How did you find the whole experience of starting the YouTube channel? Um, so one part is, of, of course, the recording and the other is more mm. the digital part. Um, in terms of recording, I thought like okay I can I know enough to talk about I can just do it yeah. I can just work, you know <laughs> not the case I have to write it down and <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah. we actually cut a lot because I have to sort my thoughts and um, my partner's helping me with that a lot with actually yeah using the right right phrasing so mm. I often have an idea and then I say it and it doesn't sound good because I don't know. It's not. It's not the best way to say it. And then it's always. I don't know. In the beginning, the first videos, even though they were less than ten minutes, in the end, took like two hours or something. Wow. So there was actually <laughs> a lot of thinking, a lot of rephrasing, um, a lot of cutting afterwards. Um, so that was a surprise, but it's it's gotten better. Um, I'm now better able to quickly just use a good way of phrasing it and I've also started writing down more what I want to say um, kind of bullet points actually so I have the topic then I have like three main points and yeah. then I more or less write down yeah every paragraph every every short paragraph yeah and then sometimes just just the keyword and sometimes also like half a phrase I want to say because it's catchy or because it's it's fitting or it's a quote or anything. Yeah. Um, so that's what I've I've learned what I should do. <laughs> um, so that's about the recording. Yeah. Um, then the digital part, okay, you have all the editing. Oh, I find it a very long process. <laughs> uh, I don't, yeah. yeah. In the beginning, actually, you've probably seen that I've shot some videos out outdoors. Yeah. That is yeah. just so painful to edit. <laughs> the sound? Oh, my God. Yeah. So I'm not sure how we're going to do it in the future no. because now I just sync the, the, the microphone I had in my, po in my, in my pants yeah. with the microphone yeah. or with the video from the camera, and that's just a whole lot of work. Yeah. Um, and then... Well, for YouTube itself, I just found a really nice quick tutorial, um, actually a blog post on how to write a good description, how to find good keywords, and I pretty much follow that a lot. So short description, like what's the video about, two to three sentences, then you have the timestamps. Um, for what I'm talking about, so people can also have a look at that if they if the information if the description of the video is not enough, and then the links below. Yeah. And I pretty much copied that awesome. um, from from the blog I found. That's yeah. Good. And then of course it's a lot of um, I don't know, you you also have to do the the preview the thumbnail and stuff. So it's a lot of editing. Um, which takes a lot of work, but which I like, to be honest. Like photo editing, I, I do like it. <laughs> <laughs> Fair enough. That's good. Yeah. That's good. Awesome. And I think, you know, having listened to what you're saying, I can absolutely relate to that because 
when I started this, you know, I, I have no experience of doing anything like this. So scripting the videos, planning the whole thing, you know, standing in front of a camera. And I was doing solo videos at that time, you know, trying to deliver. It's the way you deliver and your body language and how you move and the sound, you know, what you sound like. That's really important. Um, your facial expressions. You don't want to, you know, talk like the Terminator. I'll be back. You know, that doesn't help. So all those kind of things you really have to be you know high energy really engaging go deep you know you don't want to be monotone you want to you know change your pitch change your kind of uh highs and lows the pauses you have all sorts of stuff so you have to think really deep and i think most people just think who haven't done anything like this oh yeah you just stand in front of a camera and deliver but as soon as you stand in front of a camera, guess what? Brain freeze. That's it. You forget everything. You can't even tell your name. You can't even say your name anymore. Okay? You just freeze. And it's just the weirdest thing because it's just a camera. But as soon as it's pointing at you, that's it. You, you just freeze. So, yeah, it was definitely a learning, learning process for me. And I'm sure it was a bit of a learning curve for you as well. But, uh, you know, seriously, well done, though, man. Seriously, you've done, you've achieved a lot in a very short period of time to say you started the coaching business, to say you started the YouTube channel and you're doing well, you've got your video series going. Um, and now you actually started a Facebook page, you started to work on that. So, yeah, seriously, I just, I, I genuinely want to, you know, take this time and say well done for doing this because it's so easy to talk about stuff and say I'll do this and I'll do that and I want to do this and I want to achieve that. But to go ahead and take action and work towards it, you know, that's, that's rare. That's really rare. So you've, uh, you've come a long way, my friend and uh, well done. Seriously, really proud of you. Thank you. Awesome. Well, you were actually part of helping me to find that way to be honest. <laughs> well, I'm glad I could help that. I'm glad I could help. Awesome. And again, you know, if, if there is, if you have anything, anything that you think I can help you with, just shout. Yeah, seriously, just, just reach out and, and feel free to shout out. And that's absolutely cool. Uh, always happy to help, always happy to make connections, always happy to share my, you know, ideas, information, knowledge, experience, whatever. So, yeah, just let me know. Thanks. Yeah. That's good. No worries. Okay, so um, I want to actually ask you maybe, um, just just go back to the coaching thing and ask you maybe a series of questions based on that, uh, which I think hopefully will be quite interesting for you to uh, think about it, but definitely it'll be quite interesting for the people who are watching this right now. So my first question is, uh, first of all, who would be your ideal coaching client? What, who would they be? What would their problems be? You know, what kind of things they would be struggling with? Who would be your ideal client? I've actually thought about this a lot already. Oh, good. Okay. Um, All right. <laughs> <laughs> um, we, yeah. Yeah. The most important thing in a coachee is that they want to do something. Mm. Yeah. So, you know, until now, the coaches I've had came up to me because they wanted to change something. Yeah. So they always had that characteristic. That's great. It can be different. If, you, if you're more in the like, human resources uh, domain, you can get clients, coaches, who have to go to a coach. Right. And then they might not understand why or they might not um, agree with why and then they don't want to change. Yeah. That would probably be very hard to work with them, at least in the beginning. I yeah. mean, probably, especially with like positive psychology and, and like approaches like that, you can help them that you can actually give value to their time with them. Sure. But uh, so the most important characteristic is that a coach who wants to do something, wants to change, wants to improve. And then regarding the, the content, it can, yeah, it's a, it's a bit two-sided, a two-sided sword because it can help you if it's something that you personally know, that you have had experience with, that you've helped other people with, but it can also kind of like um, lead you to quick, quick conclusions. So you think that, oh, this has to work. Yeah. And then you're too quick down the road, you know? Yeah. Um, on the other side, if, there's, it's, if it's a fear that you don't know at all, it can be either helpful because you don't do any of those 
pre conclusions. Yeah. Or it could be more difficult because the coach has to explain all the stuff that is actually not so interesting or not so relevant. Yeah. You know, like how how does the work in that and that department work so I can understand all the all the mechanisms, all the like social connections you have there, you know? Yeah. Um so yeah, it really depends on how exactly it is. Sure. Sure. Okay. Okay. Yeah. That makes sense. Um okay, so in terms of your um the actual problems that the coachee might have, you mm. it it doesn't really matter as long as they're willing to work towards it. Is that what you're saying? That the most important thing is that they need to be willing to take action. They need to be committed. And if they're committed, then really it like nothing's going to hold them back. The fact is like they could have any issue and they, you know, they can come to you and you can help them work through it as long as they're willing to take action and as long as they're committed. Right. Yeah. So actually if you, if you look at, um, coaching offers you you might find online or I don't know in your t- in your city. Sure. A lot of coaches have like a program built up. Yes. Which is great, you know that's one way to do it. So you have like a pre-structured program, and you have a lot of questions that you answer yourself, and then you you develop. Yes. Um. How I work is is not so much in the pattern, you know. I work with asking questions mostly. So okay. it does it does matter more whether the person is able to to yeah whether the person wants to do something. So if they if I ask them a question, it can be about something that I don't understand at all. But if they themselves come up with the answer, then they have all the other things in the head figured out. So I don't right. necessarily right. have to know anything about it. Okay. So they could be somebody, and I can help them. Even though I don't know anything about their professional background, yeah, you know, or yeah. they're from a very different culture. Although with culture, it's a bit, a bit more tricky. Yeah. Um, but I don't necessarily have to know so much about what they're do- actually doing. Okay. Okay. All right. Yeah. That's uh, that. That sounds quite interesting, actually. Um, as into the fact that you're you're just able to help them figure out the answer themselves. That sounds really, really interesting. Um, Can you maybe give us an example of um, somebody where this was the case, where, you know, maybe you weren't familiar with their professional background or the issue that they were facing that particular area, um, but you were still just kind of able to help them figure out the answer or help them towards, you know, achieving a positive outcome? Mm, yeah, let me think. Um, I don't mean to put you on the spot, like, right now, but <laughs> I think it'll be really interesting to kind of have a, an example of a bit of a case study about it, because people who are watching this video, I mean, guys, I mean, you know, if you're interested in, uh, you know, working with Joran, then I will highly encourage you to reach out and, and work with him. You can go and check out the previous interview. I'll make sure I'll put the link below in the description of the video as well. And any other links that Joran has towards for his YouTube channel, uh, for the website that he's working on, for his Facebook page, I'll make sure that I put them all below in the description. But I will highly encourage you guys to actually go and just start a conversation. You know, you might not be sure about, you know, what Joran can help you with, what he's working on, uh, etc. But the fact is that you know, just starting a conversation, just having that initial conversation will just allow you to maybe uh, figure out what's, you know, what what you can do with him, okay? Um, so just start a conversation, reach out, send him an email, send him a message, as always, and just see how it goes, okay? Just start a conversation. So, sorry. yeah, sorry, back to the thing. If you can come, if you can just tell us a little bit of an example, because I think it'll be quite interesting for the people who are watching this to to know this. Yeah, so I I remember one example that is more from like um, a social, social, emotional kind of area. Um, it was a coachee of mine who um, who was worried about um, her sibling. Right. And she, she was the older one and... Um, well, actually, it was it was like a like a kind of like hierarchy kind of thing, right? And I was not 
familiar with that because I've hadn't had that with my siblings. Um, I've hadn't ha- haven't had that with like other friends discussing it. Yeah. And um, just by by asking a lot of questions about like how is the relation between the two of you, between the rest of the the social world you're connected with, and what do you want to change, what do you don't want to change, and what are the the types of actions you can you can perform. Right. Awesome. Okay. Cool, man. That's great. Um, in terms of your the people you're coaching at the moment, how do you help them? Uh, to kind of stay committed? How how do you actually make sure that they do achieve what they want to achieve? They do go through the program with you, they go actually work with you, and they actually manage to achieve what they want to achieve? Yeah. It's not always easy right. to do that. And I don't completely see that as my task. Okay. But what can help is just hitting them up during the week. Maybe you have like a weekly meeting and then you hit them up a couple of days later. Hey, how's your progress so far? And then, you know, maybe they don't answer you for a day and then they say, oh, I actually just did it. Or I don't know, maybe they say, "Um, to be honest, I didn't have time until now, but I will try to fit it in before our next session. Um, But yeah, I'm I'm not really taking responsibility for that, but I, I try to sometimes... Um, hit them up just by sending a message. Okay, okay, cool. And do you do your coaching mainly online or do you have co- coaching clients that you go and actually see on a one-to-one basis? Uh, if, I, if I know, like most most of the clients actually, um, no, it's, it's pretty much 50-50, I would say. Okay. It's pretty much 50-50, yeah. Right. Okay, wow. Yeah. And what's like the age range of your clients? Um, it's mostly around, let's say, uh, 19, 20 to 30. Okay, so quite young then. Quite, quite young, quite my age range, okay. yeah. Okay, wow, that's quite awesome. That's quite interesting. Yeah. All right, fantastic. It's also because of the people I, I reach with my social media yeah. is mostly an age group, so... Yeah. Um, by no means am I restricted to any sort of age range, but it's just the people I am able to reach easiest. Yeah, of course, of course. All right, okay, awesome. Now, I want to kind of bring the interview around towards you, okay, uh, personally. Now, having gone through all this, the fact that you've started your business, started a YouTube channel, you made a massive commitment, um, and you've just recently moved as well. So my question really is, what kind of internal changes that you had to make within yourself in order to achieve all this? Like, you know, what were the kind of um, internal roadblocks that came up or the internal kind of, um, you can say, uh, you know, things that, that, that were kind of holding you back or certain obstacles that you faced within yourself and then you had to overcome those obstacles in order to go ahead and take action on all these things and achieve because... You know, we we obviously want to dive into a little bit about mindset, but what's going to be really interesting here is actually just knowing about your mindset. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um, it, I think what was one thing that was holding me back was um, fear of not being valued or not being accepted. So especially in terms of um, when I put out the first the first flyer, you know, yeah. then again with the first video when I published it on my Facebook page. Sure. Um, um, now with the fa- well on my on my Facebook profile now with the official Facebook page, it's it's a bit easier because it's less personal. You know, it's not my name that's in there. Yeah. Even though I'm the only person behind it, really. Um, but that was definitely one big thing that was not not really blocking me, but it was slowing things down a bit. And I, I got a bit self-conscious about that, but then I also said, well, I, I have to find out. And I think people are going to value what I do, so I'm just going to do it. Of course, of course. Yeah, no, awesome, man. That's great. And, you know, as always, it's best to go ahead and take action. Um, 
and if you can get lost in thought so much you can just like overthink things so sometimes mm-hmm. it's just best to go ahead take action and see how things roll out cuz you know it might just be absolutely fine but if you just overthink things then it's very likely that you will get stuck because you know there's just so much stuff to think about and you're never going to figure it all of it out you're never going to actually have the situation as perfect uh so it's best to as always go ahead do it figure it out as you go along rather than actually stop um and just try and figure everything out before you start it's kind of like saying well i want to make a journey um but i want all the the actual traffic lights to be green before i leave the house that's never going to happen you just have to kind of go and and adjust according to the traffic conditions on the way so definitely um i think that was the that's that's the right thing to do and that's good advice for also people who are watching this video as well okay so i think what we'll do is we'll uh, kind of um go towards some rapid fire questions uh that i like to do towards the end of an interview um mm-hmm. if you're cool with that so that means that uh, just very short answers very short answers uh some few simple questions um and uh, we'll uh, we'll see how it goes so the first one uh is the fact that if you were stranded on a desert island uh yeah. and you could only take three people with you okay not friends or family three people any three people in the whole world you can choose just not friends or family who would they be and why would you choose each one of them oh i don't know how how i can give a short answer to this <laughs> um I, so one one that pops into my mind directly but just because I just was watching a video of him was Tim okay. Ferriss. Yes, of course, um, yeah, Tim Ferriss. Good choice. So that could that could be one of them. Yeah. Um Yeah, I don't, I don't really have this I, I yeah. Hmm. It's a hard question. Okay. What what about people who inspire you? How about any of the people that inspire you? Those are friends. <laughs> the friends, okay, right, fair enough. What about Paul hmm. Dubac? Cuz obviously you've studied her work. Yeah, that that would be interesting. Definitely, yeah. Yeah, why not? Yeah, Professor yeah. Paul Dubac. Professor Cowdwag, here we go. Awesome. Um, okay, so, so that's two. Uh let's look for the third one. Um I would I would reach out for coach. Um let's say who who's the best coach? I would take Tony Robbins as well. Tony Robbins, like. yes, of course. <laughs> yes, of course. Why not? Tony Robbins, absolutely. So I think that's a pretty pretty good list actually. You got Tim Ferriss, you got Professor Cowdwag and you have Tony Robbins. So you're standing there for a whole year with these three people on a desert island. I think it's going to be absolutely awesome. <laughs> yeah. I think that's a good solid answer. Awesome. Okay. So, let's move on. Um I know you started recently doing a series on happiness. So, let's mm-hmm. go there. There's a quote that says happiness is a choice. What does that mean to you? For me it means that at every moment i can choose to be happy yeah okay okay so it's you really, but it is possible right so you do believe that happiness is a choice it's a choice that we make yeah right okay awesome um another question if you were homeless right now what mm-hmm. advice would you want to receive Mm. I'm almost homeless right here right now. Mm. I don't know. I don't think it's so bad. <laughs> <laughs> you know, if if I just think about the not having the house but having everything else, uh I mean the climate here is 
acceptable at the moment. So, um, apart from that, probably how to how to find a house. Okay. Okay. Right. So, your main concern would be actually trying to work towards finding some accommodation. You know, if if I just imagine myself and how who I am, yeah. with whom I have connections and what I'm doing at the moment, yeah. then I could also live in a tent. That's okay. <laughs> you could also live in a tent. Fair enough. Fair mm -hmm. enough. Okay. Cool. Um, all right. One final question. Um, if you were a Jedi Master who could use the Force to do anything they wanted uh, and control anybody through mind control, what would you be doing right now and whose mind would you be controlling? Mm. I th yeah. I'm not very involved with politics, <laughs> but I would I would have a look into that and would would um, find out what would be good for the world to to change politically at the moment. Right, right. Okay, okay. We're going that direction. All right. We'll, that's that's a very interesting answer. Actually, that's a very interesting <laughs> answer. Cool. Okay. Cool, man. Thank you so much. All right, guys, if you've been watching this video, we have been talking to Joram Hartley Weber, who's actually uh, somebody who studied mindset, especially Carl Dweck's work, very specifically the, in the three domains of education, entrepreneurship, and sport. And he actually wrote a thesis. That's what the last interview was about. Since then, he's been working on developing his coaching business. He started his YouTube channel, and he's now actually recently launched uh, a Facebook page as well. So... In the interview today, we covered a lot, and the great thing is that Jorim, I was there to actually witness all this happen since the last interview, and Jorim has just been taking action, just absolutely crushing it, um, and he's actually recently moved as well, but he's you know, somebody who's not afraid to go ahead and pursue the dreams, pursue his goals. Um, and not just actually think about them and then procrastinate. So really important lesson here, guys, the fact that you go ahead, you take action no matter what, and you figure things out along the way. You're never going to figure everything else beforehand. And if you just think too hard and too deep about everything, then you're never going to go ahead and take action. So the best thing is to go ahead, make a start, and then figure things out as you go uh, along the way. Jerem is a great example of this. I will highly encourage you guys to maybe reach out and to start a conversation. It might be the case that you are maybe interested in, you know, uh, coaching from Jerem, which is fantastic. Um, you know, Jerem has a lot of knowledge and he has knowledge which is not available anywhere else because he has been studying this for literally years and years and years. So when he actually comes and actually talks to you and delivers and actually tries to help you with your issues and your problems, um, he knows actually uh, the, the actual meta, the dynamics of it. So he will be able to really help you uh, from a, a place of pure value, somebody who actually really has studied this subject of mindset and positive psychology at a very, very deep level. So I would highly encourage you guys to go ahead and just even start a conversation. Um, and if you're definitely interested in coaching, reach out. All the links will be below in the description of the video, the Facebook uh, page, the YouTube channel, the website, um, and anything else that Jorim wants me to include will all be below in the description of the video. So please go check that out as well. Jorim, thank you so much for taking the time to be here with us. I really appreciate it. And uh, you know, maybe we can, uh, we can do another one. Um, maybe we can do even a video together sometime. Yeah, sounds good. Let's do that. Yeah, yeah. We can maybe do a collaborate, uh, collaboration project. That'll be pretty awesome, I think. Yeah, would yeah. be nice. <laughs> that would be nice. Absolutely. All right, guys. Uh, please make sure you go and hit that subscribe button down below to subscribe to the channel, okay? Uh, this channel exists for you guys, and uh, I'm here to actually serve you guys. So when you subscribe, it just helps us to develop the relationship, but it also allows me to bring on more amazing guests so I can continue to serve you guys at a higher and better level. And the last thing I want to say is go ahead, take action on your goals, take action on your dreams, because like Jorim uh, has demonstrated, you will only 
find out what you're truly capable of once you have taken that initial step okay and the classic Chinese saying that goes the journey of a thousand miles starts with a single step and you just have to figure things out along the way so make sure you go and take that first step towards your goals and your dreams and I will catch you in the next video thank you very much guys and thank you Jorin for being here with us take care thank you bye